This is the book. This is the book that you've been working very hard to get yeah. it right, your story, exactly as it should be. And you say that despite the darkness in this story, that actually it is a tale of hope and, and most important, a, a recovery, especially for you and all your family. Yes, I think that when we first lost Millie, I didn't realise how lovely our family was. And so that's what has kept me fighting all of this time. And the only book I wanted to write would have been at from love and my courage as well mm -hmm. and to make sure that when my children read about it not that i have them in the future mm -hmm. they will be able to read about it through the words that i've chosen rather than a Somebody newspaper else. well i mean there were lots of offers over the years to tell your story yeah for your book to be written um why now um because i know there were major issues of trust weren't there there were major issues of trust and i feel like i have been fighting to be heard for 15 years and as a child, when it happened, it, that's the worst thing that can happen to a child. They get shut out from everyone, which normally isn't their fault. And so now I really feel like everyone's listening. And it's really important that this is the photo that everyone thinks of when they think about Millie. But this book, I hope, will bring her to kind of life in a three-dimensional aspect. And this is the photo that would have got the Millie of seal of approval. And I literally feel so proud standing, like sitting down in here. I feel like I'm the proudest sister in the world. And mm. I think she would definitely approve of this rather than this one. Well, you were very close because if you could, you turn the book to the back page, the, yeah. back, the yeah, very it's back, a beautiful because that is and so, heartbreaking so beautiful. It's such a wonderful picture. It is. And this is the innocence that this is how we were with our family. Mm. We were so comfortable with each other. And this is, there's a Christmas book here that we, my mum had been reading to us, so it must have been like Christmas Day, Christmas Eve, and we couldn't sleep, so she was like, I'll put them in put them together. together. Yeah. Um, you, I mean, you want to get back to that. You want to get back to being just Millie's sister, because yes. for these last few years, I mean, you must have had so many different labels and, and hats to wear, um, and that must have been tough for you. Yes, it was, definitely, and it wasn't until 10 years after we lost her, we, I eventually found some help, which was, I was so pleased, and they helped Mum as well. Mum was always worried I would never have a future, and that was her main concern. Mm. And I was obviously worried that she didn't want to live anymore, because at stages she said that. So I think it's really important that I've written it all down, and this is a document that everyone can refer to mm. and they will have it on record. Well, it, it's, um, as Holly said at the very beginning, it is a, a story of hope and of love and of recovery. But you did have to cover the darkest, darkest times of your lives. And that must have been hard for the whole family, for mum and dad, to, to talk about it again. Yes, it was so hard. And I think I didn't really realise how much it would affect me now and how much trauma there was. And when you document it all in a book like this, it's like, oh my goodness, I can't believe we've survived. Just kind of being like another hit, another hit, mm. another hit. And it'd be like, no, it's surely it's over. And it would just be next thing straight away. There was never time to kind of grieve mm. or be like, oh gosh, what's going on? Process just, it all. Yeah, you just went fight or flight. And that was like, for 10 years I was well, we doing had, that. We always saw those, the pictures uh, of Millie at home, they were shown when when the search was ongoing and then obviously the, the final conclusion to the to horrible events that happened. Um, and you've released that footage now with sound. And so you say you can, we'll play it in just a second, but you say you can, you can hear the laughter in the house. I think you can. And I think it's um, the fact that we're all involved and that lovely granny's there, and Millie's just, and we're all just laughing and taking the mickey out of each other. I'm chopping onions with goggles on to stop myself from crying. And Millie just looks absolutely stunning in that video. And I just look like a really grumpy teenager. And so I feel like it's her revenge to get, she's, yeah, she looks so happy. And that's exactly how she was. The police, I mean, suggested that initially that possibly Millie had, had run away and they sort of wanted to find fault in your family family in some way. I mean, that must have been particularly tough for you. And there was an example of um, one of Millie's school books, and it was her homework. And she'd, she'd done something a little bit mischievous, but they were trying to paint it in an entirely different light. Yes, it was quite uh, long after we, uh, she'd gone. And uh, the police came and said, oh, we found this note from Millie. 
and saying that she'd left her homework at her dad's house. And the police came round and asked if this, if, if my mum had married anyone else. And my mum was like, thanks a lot, Millie. You're really helping us out here. We're trying to kind of stir them, stir them in a way that says that you're not a runaway, and then you're leaving these notes everywhere. Mm -hmm. And what she'd done was quite... She'd worked out that a few of her friends in the class had parents that had separated. Yes, exactly. And it was the perfect excuse yes. that teenagers do. She yes. saw an opportunity and grasped it, and, and it clearly worked. And she was so intelligent, she didn't even need to do homework. And there was me that wasn't like that, and I was really grafting, and she'd be like, oh, I got an A, and I'm like, for goodness sake, you didn't even do your homework. Yeah. Yeah.